Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to White Rose Wednesday. I'm your host, Shauna. I am a guest designer here for White Rose Crafts. And today I'm super, super excited to be sharing with you a uh, junk journal kit that I will be working with from um, this, a limited edition put together by White Rose Crafts. Let's tag some friends, see if we can get some people to join us. I'm just going to tag until it doesn't let me tag anymore. <laughs> All right, there's some friends. Hey, Dondi. Hey, Grace and Marilyn. Sharon. Hello, hello, ladies. So before we get into our awesome junk journal kit that um, I received the other day, I have prepared a little box for us. And of course, most of you know me, I love my noodle boxes. Um, so this one is just a really good size. And uh, let's see, how big of a spine are we working with here? Yep, a one inch spine. And what does this work out to be? This is about seven by almost five. So a really good size to work with. So I broke it down. When I break down these boxes, I just simply cut off the top the one side and the bottom. And a lot of times I like to use the other side to reinforce the spine here, but I didn't do that on these ones for some reason. Um, I did take some gesso, just some heavy white gesso, and have prepared uh, the surface on the top here. So um, a lot of times I will do that if there is a shiny cover. You can also just uh, file it off with some sandpaper or a sanding block. And so I did that on the front. And then the inside is gonna look like this. Now I am a little bit uneven on my cutting here, but those were just my kitchen shears. So we'll even it up here once we're ready to go. So I'm gonna use um, some envelopes. Uh, one on each side, and we're gonna make some little flips and flaps. Hey, hey, Christine. Welcome, Sue. Hello, hello. Kay should be joining us anytime. I love when Kay is here because she knows all of the awesome White Rose Craft products and uh, can definitely help us out with links and answering questions. So watch for her. She should be joining us soon. And let's see. So before we do anything on the inside, I think I'm gonna put this here. Now the beauty of doing this before you do anything else is that um, your little flips and flaps will just be hidden by whatever you layer on there. So it's a really good way to add some extra pages and some little flips and flaps. And these are about perfect. These are just some envelopes I had at home. Um, when I'm out thrifting or whatever, I almost always will look for envelopes because they are really fun to make little flaps. And we're going to do something like that and then probably... These are just some cute little coin envelopes that I found somewhere. Probably put something like this so that we can have a little flap. Now what's fun with your envelopes is you can keep building. You can build these any which way that you see fit. So um, they're really great. You can make them go, hi Rhonda, you can make them go this way. You can make them go from top to bottom, bottom to top. They can flip out, flip down, flip around, whatever you want them to do. Um, and you can even cut them off and make little pockets out of them. So don't discount your envelopes. They are amazing. I think we're gonna do something like this and then it will be in like this for our book. So what we're gonna do first is, um, we're just gonna go ahead and glue these in. Hey, hey, Rita. Okay, so I've got my gesso down. I'm gonna put these flip flaps down and um, I'm trying this new glue. I've got a new glue from Primo. We're gonna see if I like it, I don't know. I think glue is one of those things. You, uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna save that for later when I'm doing some little more detailed work. I'm gonna go with the, the 
tacky glue, the clear gel tacky glue, because that is what I'm used to building with. And we're not going to change it up too much here. Do you have some glue build up there that we'll just take out? All right, here we go. Let me know when you're here. Say hello. Um, I did put a link to this junk journal kit. Um, now, these pieces aren't in the kit. These are just pieces that I have at home and you probably have at home. Um, but we will be working with the kit here just shortly. Get a couple pieces on here. Hi, Kathy. Hey, hey. I can see comments. Yay. I don't know what was going on last week. It had me locked out for a little bit. All right. So the junk journal kit is absolutely awesome. You get some six by six paper. You get some mulberry paper. I know we've all been chatting about mulberry paper. Uh, you get some Stamperia rice paper to um, work with. And we're gonna make a really cool thing for the, uh, the cover using that Stamperia paper. Okay. So again, these aren't part of the kits. A couple of things to be said about your boxes. Um, I know I've been asked before if I ever get worried about bugs or anything like that in the, in the boxes. Um, I always make sure that any boxes that I'm using, the actual food that's inside the box usually is in some other kind of packaging inside. So it's not really touching the box. Um, you can usually see if your box is nice and clean and this one, there's no evidence of anything. If it does ever worry you, you can seal your chipboard. I use gesso on most of it. That kind of seals it in. Um, you can use a spray adhesive, kind of seal it in. Uh, you could bake it for a few moments. Um, or you don't even have to use uh, food packaging. You could use the box from some envelopes or the box from an ink cartridge or headphones or whatever that you have boxes from. Um, I know I saw a lady uh, earlier today, she made some really great things out of a Ziploc box. Um, so Ziploc plastic bag, she was making all kinds of fun things from the packaging. You can also buy your chipboard um, and you can also use the chipboard that's on the back of like your uh, scrapbook paper pads. So lots of options to get chipboard. I try to recycle. The true nature of junk journals is using what you have and uh, trying to utilize things that would otherwise be thrown away. But the biggest reminder about junk journals to remember is that there's no rules. So just have fun with it and see what you can create. Hey, hey, Miss TC. Thanks for being here. All right, so let's break into this beautiful kit. Let me show you some of the things that come in this kit. Now, this is my favorite. I love Stamperia. And these are the, uh, let's zoom out just a little bit. You guys can see my messy desk. Um, these are some uh, decoupage papers, and it's just so beautiful. It's rice paper, and I cannot wait. I'm going to put this piece right here, right on the front. It's going to be the focal point there. Um, some beautiful, beautiful rice papers. Look at these, or mulberry papers, I'm sorry. Got some beautiful colors here. You got your paper in yesterday. Yeah, so pretty, right? Um, you get some, what else do we get in here? There's a beautiful cut apart page from, I don't know if it's, if you say a peon designs or pion designs. Um, beautiful papers. This one's called From Grandma's Attic. Um, and so you get some lovely little photos, mostly of these little kids. Look at this one, so cute. And uh, let's see, what else do we got in here? You get a Distress Oxide ink, um, and this is the Bundled Sage, and it's gonna be really pretty. Loving it. You get some beautiful wood shapes, little pieces. There's a clock, I love that. A little keyhole, all kinds of fun things. Some beautiful stickers. We'll go through those more later. Um, ah. I was kind of going through my kit last night. So um, some gorgeous girls. This is the Santoro. I love Santoro. Um, this is some of their ribbon. They make the gorgeous girls. So this kit is available from White Rose Crafts. I did put a link in the description box above. Um, I know they don't have very many and it is a limited edition. Uh, so if you are interested, definitely check it out. You get this cool cling stamp. This is from Paper Parachute, so it's kind of fun. And then um, a beautiful six by six paper pad from Scrapberries. It's the Mechanical Illusions. Now these are 
single-sided papers, which sometimes is nice because then you don't have to make any decisions about which paper to use and which paper to hide. So, and I love it. It's called uh, Mechanical Illusions. And it's going to be so much fun kind of doing this steampunk vibe. And you get 12 different sheets. So um, no duplicates, but uh, lots of fun here. All right. So that's kind of the color palette that we're working with. You guys can see we've got like these golds and greens. And oh, oh yeah, look at this one. I love this one. Okay. And then, um, of course, I added my noodle box <laughs> and some envelopes. And, um, oh yes, you get some beautiful brass charms. I think they're brass charms. And a fun stamp from um, Prima. So this is gonna be really fun to use, you guys. And a beautiful shimmery, look at this. Look at this shimmery paper. Oh, there we go. There's Kay. Hey, Kay. Yeah, so ladies, only three kits left. Um, they, <laughs> It's selling out super fast. Yeah, this is a kit that's put together by White Rose Crafts, and you get all these beautiful things, and um, I'm sure Kay will put another link in the description here. She says there's only three left, so um, yeah. But I couldn't believe my eyes when I opened this kit. So many beautiful papers and, and pieces to use. So we're going to have a little bit of fun with this today. Um, some of the other papers that you can add to your junk journals, um, you can um, use Vintage Book Page, which I have here. Eek, I got so many things out. <laughs> this kit really gives you a lot of bang for your buck. Um, I love it. You get a little bit of everything. And uh, mulberry paper, too, you guys. Mulberry paper. Okay. So let me set some of that aside for a second. Let me just talk to you quickly about some of the other things that I will add. You already saw I add a couple different kinds of envelopes. I'm always saving envelopes. Uh, my book cover here, my jacket. You can use vintage books. You can use the sleeves from, from other books. You can... Um, uh, who is that? two now oh karen ordered one <laughs> um okay so you guys can use um let's see other other things you can put in your journals um this is just packaging this is like a paper that was wrapped in uh something i've got some some cardstock here this is lined cardstock um, this is black line cardstock so if you write on this you have to use like a jelly roll pen or metallic type of pen and um and so forth now i've often been asked recently why i don't coffee dye really much anymore and sometimes i just cheat like these are vintage book pages and look at this beautiful vintage color so if you're using vintage book page you don't have to do any dyeing to get it to look like this now you don't have to coffee dye or tea dye or eco dye or any kind of dye at all if you don't want to um yes she does new kits every couple of months and they are so amazing um the last one was a really beautiful romance card kit, and it was so beautiful. So many fun papers. Um, so this one I did coffee dye, and coffee dye doesn't have to be difficult, you guys. You, you can just use your leftover coffee. Um, you can use some instant coffee granules to make it a little darker if you want to. And this one got, um, I, I heated mine to dry it in the oven, and I left it just a little bit too long. Um, so that's okay. It didn't burn, but it is really... Um, stiff and so that's how you get a nice crinkle on it and depending on the pans or doilies or whatever that you use you can really make some fun patterns so um, it is fun to learn to coffee dye um, and, and really it doesn't take much you just dip your stuff in coffee and dry it um, and then I'm going to be using some cardstock today too so um, so again these pieces are not in the kit but these are things that you can easily add to any junk journal that you have you can use um, things that come in the mail you can use magazines the true nature of a junk journal is you know just trying to recycle things to go into your uh, your kit and your your journals so okay so I have my um, hamburger helper box and we've glued these two envelopes here so we can have some beautiful flip flaps and um, we can also make these into pockets you can utilize your envelope just like it is or you can cover that with paper and make a side slit here and have a pocket there or a top slit and have a pocket at the top so uh, we'll see what we're gonna do with that later but let's go ahead and get our um, 
our spine working here and um, then we can put in our eyelets. Ooh, you got one of the kits, yay! Oh, I love working with mulberry paper and I'm gonna put a little feature of it on the front cover so you'll get to see that here just shortly. Um, I'm sorry guys, I gotta grab some tape and it's way up high and I'm not a way up high kind of girl so I've gotta stretch and stretch and that's not the right tape. All right, well, we will just use a little bit of this one. So I do like to reinforce the spines on these. Um, the spine of your junk journal is really going to be taking the most of the abuse of your book, if you think about it. Holds in your pages. And, um, you know, if, if somebody puts it on a bookshelf or whatever, you know, usually they put its spine out. So um, it will be taking a little bit of a beating just, just in that way and the handling and so forth. So I like to put a little bit of tape and um, usually I will use duct tape, but it doesn't really matter what kind of tape. Ugh. Okay, here we go. Maybe. Sorry, guys. I usually try to have all this stuff ready to go. There we go. I think it goes this way. All right. So we're just going to put a couple pieces of this on the inside of our spine here. And it doesn't look pretty right now, but don't worry, we will beautify it and it will be an amazing journal here before we know it. Hey, hey, Stephanie. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and put a couple pieces of tape to support that spine in there. Like I said, I usually use duct tape, but any kind of tape that you have will work. You can also use other things like uh, paper and fabric and I mean anything goes guys whatever you have but it is a good idea to do all this reinforcing and all that good stuff now before you get really going um, because none of this will be seen okay so we've got that we're gonna smooth it out a little bit here and you can see already it just really makes it more reinforced um, just gives our our creases here a little more of a support system and that's the other thing too, when whatever you're putting on, you still wanna make sure that everything is functional. Okay, so Kay said you can get some of these things um, separately, but not all of them. So, um, so if you miss out on this kit, definitely um, take note of the items that we're using and uh, you can have some fun uh, looking for those pieces individually. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just put a piece of fabric down and this is not in the kit so you can use fabric if you want to or you can just use paper so so far these things here are not in the kit these are just things that I have at home and these are the nature of junk journals you just kind of use what you have and uh, make a fun book so we're gonna glue this down right over our tape and I'm just gonna glue in the center at first because I want to put some of these beautiful papers on the side here so be pretty uh, generous with your glue. This is holding fabric. And if you want to use Fabri-Tac or um, any of those types of glues, I'm just using Aline's Clear Gel Tacky Glue. You can use anything that you have. Pretty much anything goes with a junk journal, you guys. Okay, so we're going to smooth this out quite a bit here. And I'm going to close this up. And we're going to wrap this around and glue our edges right over that tape. We could have put tape on the outside too. Again, anything you can do to reinforce your spine is a good thing as long as it's still functional. I'm doing good today. How are you, Miss Stephanie? It is a cold day here in Washington. We did get some... We, you know, one day we were having flowers. I saw crocus. I was super, super, super excited. As a little girl, I used to always watch for crocus with my grandma. And that was like the first sign of spring. And, you know, it was just really exciting. And they're so beautiful. Um, and I saw crocus. And then the very next day, we had snow. <laughs> Not lots of snow, but still it was snow. <laughs> Yes, definitely watch for Kay to post those links. She'll be posting those. Um, 
And any questions that you guys have about the products, uh, Kay and Ashley can help you out there. Kay is the owner of White Rose Crafts, and she is super knowledgeable of all of her products and um, can help us out in that regard. Let's see, where is... Um, I wanted to put the other piece I had there. Where did it go? Where did it go? There it is. All right. Okay, so just another little piece of fabric, and then we can get our binding in, and then we'll start working on our front cover. I'm super excited. So this binding system is just gonna be um, an elastic one so that we can have a uh, pages that slip in and out, which is super cool. Um, I love doing that because then you can add pages as you, as you need to, and you can take them out and work on them if you want to. Um, so lots of fun. I think I'm gonna go ahead and um, Put this here so it wraps around on the inside. Uh, this is the outside so I want to try and keep it as nice and clean and tidy as I can and you can sew around these too if you want to. If you are someone who loves to use your sewing machine go for it. Um, if not glue it up. <laughs> All right. Now this beautiful kit that Kay has put together, um, you you can use, like I said, with any style of book. So if you're making an altered book uh, where you just start with a book and you um, decorate the book as it is, if you're doing an art journal or a glue book or a look book or any of those things, um, this kit will definitely be a really nice addition for that. So I am just making this one. Um, a junk journal from a box. We're just kind of building our own and starting from scratch here, but really it doesn't take much work. And um, what I really like about this is that most anybody can take part with these items because, um, you know, we all have cardboard laying around our house. We all have, um, now I wouldn't use corrugated cardboard for the base because it is very, um, it, it fluxes really easily and it will degrade over time pretty easily. Ooh, subscriptions. That would be fun. Yeah. Subscription kits. That would be great. Okay. So now we've got our fabric in here and we just need to make sure that everything still bends and folds as it's supposed to. So we want to just crease everything down. Um, this fabric is just a little bit sticky because it has the glue. Um, and don't worry about the edges. We're going to cover those with some beautiful papers. Add some of those mulberry papers over it. I'm super excited to get to those. Okay, and then I'm going to put in some eyelets. I like to put in eyelets anytime that I poke holes because I feel like it really reinforces the holes. But if you don't have an eyelet setter or an eyelet um, crocodile or any of that, you can just use a hole punch. And this is a really great method um, of binding in order to just use a regular hole punch because you don't have to reach to the center of the book. You, you just have to get uh, right into this area here. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and you, this, the crocodile has a cool little measuring tool. You can um, set this and it will get you the same depth every time you go in. Yeah, that's gonna be great, okay. So I want to make sure I get in the spine now that I put this fabric on here and I'm going to do two holes at either end. And if you are a measurer, feel free to measure. You can also make templates. You, you can do anything, but this is such a small spine and I'm only poking two holes and um, we're just going to go with it. Where did my scissors go? Uh, there we go. There they are. Here we go. Okay. I'm just going to cut this extra pieces of fabric off. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side here. So we want two holes in the spine on either side, and you want them to... Um, Line up as best as you can get them because we are going to make two lines with our string. And we're going to use elastic so that we have a floating spine is what it's called. 
And if you're new to junk journaling, don't get too caught up on all of the terms and trying to figure out if you have all of the tools and whatever. You can make a journal just out of envelopes. If you have nothing else and you want to put the envelopes together and make a beautiful little folio or journal, go for it. Um, don't let anything stand in your way. Uh, junk journals, like I said, the true nature of junk, junk journals is using what you have and um, just turning something that would be ready for the bin into something really great again. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I've always struggled with that, Sharon. Um, things kind of disappear and then as my eyesight kind of disappeared, <sighs> the struggle has gotten even more real. I'm like, come on, where did I put it? Okay, so we're just gonna set these eyelets in there. There we go. Yeah, two seconds before, literally. I I just finished using those scissors and then it just blends into everything. That's right. <laughs> okay. All right. So, here's what we have right now. We have our we have our noodle box. We have our spine covered with tape and then covered with some fabric. Uh, we have some envelopes attached here because we're going to have some little flip outs. And then we have eyelets at either side to do our spine. So we're done doing eyelets for now. And um, the next thing I'm going to do is put in some elastic. Now, this is just, this was super cheap. This I got, see it was Christmas, but look, these are white and blue colors. And it made it 80% off. So I think I paid 80 cents for this cording um, when normally it's $4. Um, so... Any kind of elastic cording though, you could you could probably even use um, some kind of a, like a bungee yarn or something. Some people use baker's twine. For this type of a book, I like to use elastic uh, because it allows your pages to fluctuate a little bit. Hi Linda, you're just in time. Hey, <laughs> yes, the noodle queen. That is my nickname I've been given because I love these noodle boxes. Um, you're just in time, Linda. We are putting in, um, we're putting in our, our, our spine and our binding here, and then we're going to get to work with this beautiful kit. So, so far, the items that I'm using are just items that I had at home, uh, but I cannot wait to start playing with this beautiful paper and uh, all of the fun elements that are in this kit. We're going to dye some lace with this oxide ink. We are going to um, use some of these beautiful papers. Okay, so you can see this just stretches like this, so it is just elastic. Um, anything that you have that makes necklaces or bracelets or, um, you know, whatever you have. So I like to just take it like this and just kind of lay it out like it's going to go and uh, snip here. You can leave it attached. You can, you can do whatever is easiest for you. Um, some people cut three times the length. That's the normal for, for most junk journals, but for this one, I'm just going to cut hopefully just what I need. Okay, and we're going to start on the inside. Our spine um, bindings here are going to wind up being on the inside, which is great, uh, because then you don't have to um, have to see them on the outside. So we're going to go up through the bottom here, and then out through here, and back around here, and then down here. And then we want to pull it super, super tight and tie it. Now you can tie it in a knot, you can tie it um, in a bow, you can do whatever you want. The first way that I tie it, I, I try to pull it as tight as I can without the book curling. And um, I just try to tie it in a double knot. And then once I'm all done, I can tie it in a cute little bow or I can clip them off even. Okay, and so what's great about having these eyelets out here and no uh, interference with our spine, we can add those little wooden charms, we can add those little metal charms out here, we can just have a great time with some charms and some decorative pieces. So there is our um, 
our spine. We got that part all done, and then we can start covering everything, uh, which is gonna be so great. So I'm gonna lay this flat right here before we put any of our papers inside, and I'm gonna work on the cover because I am just super excited to get my hands on this Stamperia rice paper and some beautiful mulberry paper. And um, I've got just some cardstock here that I was thinking about putting just kind of right here to cover. So I think I'm gonna do that. Again, this cardstock is just cardstock that I have at home, so you can use uh, whatever you have to add to this kit, which is really great. I love the versatility of it all. And um, if you don't have other things, like I said, use junk mail, use your magazines, use little snippets of whatever you find. Um, use tags from your clothing, use um, envelopes or the prescription bag that your medication comes in or, you know, whatever it is that you have, you can utilize a little bit of everything. Okay, so I'm going to put this just right along here. And I'm not measuring, guys. Um, I'm not much of a measurer and the measurements will be totally different based on the, uh, the book base that you're using. So if you are using, um, you know, a different type of a box, you're going to have a different size than I have. Um, and so you'll just want to make everything cut to fit to your own custom size. But like I said, don't stress out about it. Uh, it's supposed to be fun. Oops, I cut that one too short. How did I do that? All right, well, let's try again. I like this width. We'll use these somewhere else in there. Make some journal cards or something. All right, let's try and get it right this time. See if I were a measuring person, that probably wouldn't have happened, but at the same time, measuring kind of stresses me out. I don't really dig it. I can do it, I just don't really like it. Okay, so let's just fold this around where we need it to cut. And I can see it really good. Here we go. Yes, there we go. That's good. Okay. And then this piece will fit here. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it to match the same length. It's gonna be a little bit skinnier on that other side, but that's okay. That's all right, okay. So let's go ahead and um, put this down. Now I will do some inking once I've got everything all glued on here. And you don't have to do the inking if you don't want to, but it is a fun way to add some extra contrast. Uh, you can add all kinds of fun ribbons or ink or all kinds of things. And that is what I love about junk journals is that even if you're using the same kit, no two journals are gonna turn out exactly the same. They just aren't. Okay, so I'm super excited to get this down here. And I do have a little bit of excess that I can trim off. All right, let's go ahead and put this one down. Now see, we are covering up those envelopes and nobody has to know that they were envelopes, um, except for us. Although really not that it matters because they are, uh, they are cute too. As soon as we start adding our papers to them, it's just gonna be beautiful. All right, here we go. And this um, paper is just a little short, but we're gonna add some ribbon in there, so it's not gonna matter.
Now your cover can be anything you want. Some people get intimidated by the cover, but I love the cover. Um, it is kind of a representation of your whole book in and of itself. So, you know, I mean, I guess I understand where the pressure is coming from. But at the same time, um, it's just another place for you to really have some fun with the items um, that you're working with and let it be a representation of your book. Okay. So let's make sure everything still moves like it's supposed to. This is what our book is looking like so far. Yeah, and I've got some glue everywhere, but that's okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this like this. Here's where the fun comes, you guys. I'm so excited for this Stamperia stuff. Let's see. Yes! I'm super excited for more Stamperia, you guys. I could, if I had to choose one brand and use one brand only, I think I could get away with just using Stamperia. <laughs> they have such beautiful things. Oh, it's rice paper, you guys. It feels so amazing in my hands. Listen to that crinkle. Woo! Okay, so I am going to, I don't want to like just start tearing willy-nilly here. So I'm gonna just use my scissors and kind of cut around this design. Um, I want to make sure I have some other pieces not ripped <laughs> that I can use somewhere else in the book because I'm probably going to use every single piece on this paper. I just love it. Really big steampunk feel here. Okay, so I think this is going to be um, my fun little cover piece. And we're gonna get out some of that mulberry paper and we're gonna put some of that behind here. I love the texture of this creamy colored one. How absolutely fun and wonderful is that? And we're gonna use our stamp and we're gonna stamp, uh, stamp some stuff behind here so we have a lot of really great interest. I love all of the holes in this mulberry paper. Look how amazing. Okay, so if you've yet never used mulberry paper before, it is really soft and fibrous, almost like a handmade paper. And um, when you work with it, well, when I work with it anyways, I like to get it wet a little bit and tear it so that I can really make the edges have that fun, fibrous feel. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and figure out where I wanna do this. I think I, think I just kinda want a small square, but let's do some stamping first. Um, and then we will play with that. So I have these um, stamps from Prima. One comes in the kit. Where did it go? Oh boy, here we go. Find the stamp, you guys, find the stamp. All right, let's see, let's pull it down here. What do we got? I put all of these great things in a little pile. There it is, there it is, there it is, wait. <laughs> okay. So now I don't know what this um, bundled sage is going to look like on our um, cardstock here, but we will definitely give it a try. And I've got some vintage photo and uh, just some black, so we're going to have some fun. Now these are really cool stamps. They make, uh, Prima makes a lot of really fun uh, mixed media style stuff. So if you've never played with them before, you are missing out because they're amazing. And I know White Rose Crafts uh, website has a bunch of different ones and they're really good price point too, you guys. Um, I think that's one of my favorite parts is that they're just a really great price to work with. Ugh. Okay, so you can peel them off of here or you can leave it on here, depending on what you're gonna do. I'm just gonna leave it on here and we're gonna go with it. Um, I'm gonna use some of this archival ink. This is just potting soil, so it's just brown. And we're gonna press our stamp here and we're just gonna press it everywhere just to get some good interest. Look how fun that is. Oh my goodness, I love this one. I didn't have this stamp and it was in this kit absolutely awesome now look I'm not I'm not paying attention to perfection because this is just gonna be in our background right so we just want to um, get some fun marks here something extra to look at you can turn it however which way you want make them go a little bit of every which way 
Ooh, I love this. Okay. Let's see. Finnebear texture background stamps. Yeah, they're like $1.99. How amazing, right? Um, oops, this string is just not wanting to behave. There we go. And I'm just going to add some to the other side here so we have a little bit of a matching front and back. And I love these. You can use these on just about everything. You can use it on your book page. You can use it on your covers. You can use it on your ephemera. You can use this on envelopes to add a, some more fun interest if you're sending the mail. If you are a card maker, you can make some of your own backgrounds. And you can do as much or as little as you want. I kind of went a little bit overboard, but like I said, most of it you're not going to see anyway. So, all right. And, okay, so now um, with our mulberry paper, I'm just going to squirt it with some water. Yes. Ooh, the Kaiser Craft ones too. Yes. Background stamps are a really good investment, you guys, because you can use them for just about anything. Like this could be, we could change this up and stamp it in pastels and it would be really cute to look like a speckled egg background for Easter um, or for spring or something fun like that. You could do it in red and white for Valentine's Day or red and green for Christmas. Um, whatever backgrounds that you're doing, super fun to just add some of that. Okay, so I wanna see where my crease is here. There we go, all right. I'm gonna go ahead and just, maybe I just wanna tear this. Oh, look how lush, that just tears so nicely, you guys. Now, I absolutely love paper tearing. I've had a lot of practice at it. Um, if you don't feel like you're very good at paper tearing, one really good way to help yourself learn is to just take a piece of scrap paper draw some shapes and try and tear them out. That was, I took a class on paper tearing years ago. Um, I don't know what I was thinking it was, but we were given this beautiful kit and um, the teacher got us all excited. We were in there and, and she's like, is everybody excited? And we're like, yes. She's like, okay, I want everybody to sit down, take a look at this beautiful kit and pick out your most favorite piece of paper. So we all did and we're talking about these papers and there's like I don't know, 30 or 40 of us in this class and, and we're all like, which one is your favorite? Which one is your favorite? And we're all looking and we're having a great time. And the teacher says, does everybody have their favorite? And we're like, yes. And she's like, okay, hold it up. Let us all see which one is your favorite. So we do and we're all excited. And she says, okay, grab it and tear it in half. And we're like, oh. and then the whole class went quiet. <laughs> Yes, you can do this with a water pen, too. You can trace around with a water pen, absolutely. Um, I'm just kind of old school. You can even do it with a, a paintbrush dipped in water. And um, I just love the feel of the paper between my fingers. I absolutely love it. I feel like I have fairly good control because I've been paper tearing, like I said, for lots of years. <laughs> that was my first class and in introduction to paper tearing. And it was a little traumatic at first, but we all did eventually tear it. We, we were waiting for our neighbors, like, are you, are you going to tear it? Are you going to tear it? It's my favorite one. Are you going to tear it? And we were so glad that we did it by the end of the class. But, you know, it was a little frightening at first. Absolutely frightening. <laughs> and I've torn so many papers since then. So, yeah. <laughs> And sometimes I have to admit, some of the papers I'm working with, I'm like, oh, it's so pretty. How am I going to tear this? But then I just, I just do it, and it looks beautiful. So now with this rice paper, you do get some fibers, too, when you tear it. So um, that is kind of nice. It takes away that harsh cut look and gives you just kind of a more rough edge, which I absolutely love. Now, you will know I did tear it off the big sheet, or I did cut it off the big sheet because I... I just wanted to make sure I didn't get a little carried away with my tearing. Um, if you are to use like a paintbrush with some water uh, or a water brush, it would look a little something like this. You just you just get your paintbrush wet, and you just go along the edges 
and kind of dampen the paper so that it tears more easily in that area. So you just, you just outline it and then it will just kind of separate more easily. Ah, oh, this is so cool. I've been waiting to get my hands on some Stemperia rice papers, and I love them. I love to decoupage, you guys, so rice papers and tearing and all of that is my jam. I love it. I love the mulberry paper, too, so we're going to get to that in just a second. Um, when you're tearing, take your time. Um, you know, you... It, it's okay if you tear some of the edges of the design. It's okay if you... Oh, sorry dog. <laughs> um, it's okay if you, you know, if you rip some things, that's the way it's supposed to go. I usually like to take my nail and just kind of guide along the edge, just like so, and just get those fibers pulled out of the paper. So rice paper, it's, um, it's, I don't know if it's actually made of rice or not, but you can see it's really thin paper and you can see the fibers, like you can see right through it. It's almost transparent um, and it rips really nicely and it leaves you with these beautiful little fibers and it's perfect for decoupaging if you like to decoupage with Mod Podge or collage medium or whatever. Um, you can make some really great designs and you'll see once we sit this down on the cover, you're gonna be able to see a little bit of that stamping through the paper. Um, I just want to take off some of these harsh, ed harsh edges. Wow, that's kind of a tongue twister. Um, from where I cut it here, and then we'll put it down. And it just leaves these beautiful little fibers. So more textures, more interest. Um, junk journals are really about creating interest for you to look at and, uh, and just have some fun with both the making and using them. Never used any rice paper. Yeah, this clock paper is so pretty. Stamperia always has the most beautiful designs. I love Stamperia. Okay. All right, I think we're I think we're pretty good there. So, now you can see once we put this down, you'll be able to still see some of the designs through, but I wanna put some of the mulberry paper peeking out from the edges here too. So we're not done yet. We still have some more, more to do before we glue this down. And um, the mulberry paper is thicker than rice paper, but like this one is so cool. It's got like, it almost reminds me of like Swiss cheese. It's got all these holes. Like you can see my fingers through. How cool is this? Um, and so usually what I like to do when I work with mulberry paper, now this is, I've never been formally trained or anything to do this, um, but this is how I work with it and how I like to work with it. I spray it with water. I don't soak it down, um, but I do spray it enough that those fibers are easily able to tear apart. Now look, I just said I love these little holes and I'm ripping them apart, but <laughs> that's all right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just make it about like this. Ballerina Stamperia paper, yes, that's a beautiful collection. Kay was just working with their, I think it's cats and, what was it, cats and, cats and some kind of flowers. Um, I think it was orchids, actually. Yeah, it was so pretty. Um, I've used their uh, steampunk one, like the Vagabond one before, and I have one that's um, the blue it is uh, like winter. I, I just recently used that one too, not long ago. Okay, so. Now I tore right out of the center because those were the areas of this paper that appealed to me. If um, you are trying to preserve more of your paper, start at one of the ends <laughs> and then it'll be a little easier to save. But um, I utilize every single scrap of mulberry paper because if you're making little ephemera clusters or whatever, even the tiniest little piece will add some fun fibers. You can use it in place of uh, like a fabric or fun fiber. Now look how cool this is. I absolutely love it. And I need to tear around this top piece. 
And we are gonna go ahead and add some of the oxide ink to this paper. Now you could stamp on this, you can leave it just like it is. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it just like this, I think, here eventually. And this one, I'm gonna tear off the bottom piece here. Now again, like I said, I save all these scraps of my mulberry paper. I, you know, I just tear little pieces of them and add them to tags or add them to my backgrounds or whatever it is that I'm working with. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna peel this off so you guys can see it a little better. I'm going to, even if you don't have this um, stamp pad, when you get one of these, you can do a lot of things with these. You can drip the, drip the inks everywhere for like splatters. I'm just gonna squirt some on my acrylic block. You could use a little palette. Thank you guys for helping out with all of the questions in the comments, that really helps a lot. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and smear this around like this, and then you can add some splattering. You could um, take this and smear it right onto your paper. It's going to be a little thicker, though. I feel like this splattering really adds to the background that we've got here with this background stamp, so that's kind of fun. Okay, and the mulberry paper just takes to it really nicely. Look at all of those beautiful splatters that we've got on there. This one is mulberry paper. The paper with all of the clocks is a rice paper. Okay, and I'm gonna turn this on because I just realized I wanted to put some ribbon here too, and I don't want to put it over the uh, mulberry paper or the rice paper, so. I'm gonna go ahead and grab out this Gorgeous Girls, uh, or I say Gorgeous Girls because that's what they make the, um, the cute, cute little girls from Santoro are called the Gorgeous Girls. So this is some of their ribbon. How do I get this open? Eek. All right, here we go. We're just gonna cut in here. And I think I'm gonna use a little bit of this green ribbon and just put it along this seam here. There we go, I'll peel one of those out. And I think that will tie in really nicely with um, the sage color that we've got going. Now, if you've never paid attention to oxide ink before, see how it's getting all of that white and fun stuff there, that's the oxidization mixed with the water. So you'll get that from uh, the oxide inks if you mix it with water. All right, so I think I'm just gonna put this little piece of trim on either edge here, whoops. So we're gonna cut two. And don't worry about wrinkle or the wrinkles of this ribbon. Um, as soon as you put some glue on it and pull it straight, it will be wrinkle free. Mulberry paper lace in cream and white. Ooh, that sounds good. Yes, I told you ladies, White Rose Crafts has like all the great things. No, these aren't Tim Holtz papers. I think Tim Holtz does have some um, like specialty papers, but I think they're more like a, like a washi type of a paper, but definitely not like this mulberry paper. And Stamperia is where it's at when it's for rice papers, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I love their rice papers. Okay, so let's get some more glue down. All of the things today, Marilyn, are found on the White Rose Crafts website. Um, they sell most all of these things. And the ladies, uh, Kay is giving you some links there, and I think Ashley's helping out with some questions too. Yeek, this is not warm enough yet. Come on, glue tool, heat up. Yeah, if you um, have a chance, just check out the White Rose Crafts website. There's all kinds of fun things there. There's kits. There's some of your basic needs like inks and adhesives and uh, that kind of thing. 
Then they also have fun specialty papers and stamps and ribbons and little bits of everything. There's all kinds of fun um, sequins and uh, yeah, all kinds of cool stuff. All right. Let's see, come on Ryobi, let's go. We got work to do. There it comes. All right, so see how my ribbon was kind of wrinkly? It was all wrinkled like this. Then when we glued it down, it's just nice and straight and fine. I love this color palette. <laughs> Such a fun colors. Oh, watching me on your iPad, you multitasker. Go Marilyn. She's getting her shop on, ladies. Usually I like to start gluing just one piece at the top here first and then once I'm sure I've got that in the right spot where I want it then I put the rest of the glue on and glue it down I just got these new glue sticks and I'm just not so sure like they have trouble advancing and it takes a long time. There we go. And then sometimes it takes so long that the glue is dry and I have to start over. <laughs> okay, but not this time. We're good. All right, so I'm going to leave those ends and we can trim those when we get to the inside. Oh, good. I'm glad you're liking it, Kay. Thank you. Yes. I was so inspired by these clocks and all these beautiful colors. I just, I just love it. Okay. One thing to note when you are gluing down mulberry paper is very, very thin, really. Like I said, you can see my, my hands through it. Um, so, you know, just, just kind of pretend like you're gluing vellum. Um, I like to glue in very few areas. So usually I glue the tops or the corners and then whatever I'm gluing over it, I'll put a lot of glue underneath of that. So just a little bit at the top here and you can kind of see that the glue does start to come through a little bit, kind of like it would on uh, vellum. So again, just a little bit, the tops and the bottoms. And then when I put that clock on, I'll put more glue under that and that'll be in the center area. And um, you can seal this if you wanted to, like with a Mod Podge or whatever. Um, I, I think that you might lose some of this fibrous feel if you did that, though, because the idea of this is just to kind of have these loose, fuzzy little fibers. Um, and if you're really into these fuzzy fibers, you can use a dry toothbrush and kind of brush them out. Um, back in the early scrapbooking days, tear, tear bears were made from this... Uh, mulberry paper and they were selling for hundreds of dollars on ebay and literally they were just bears torn out of mulberry paper <laughs> but people were going crazy for them um, okay so i think i'm gonna glue this just like this now you can go ahead and add some extra elements like in these little holes here you could add some brads if you wanted to um, and that kind of thing you could add some different little hands on your clocks um, again maybe a brad right there Let's try it. Maybe maybe I'll add a brad or two here or there. Let me see if I can find some that are the right color scheme. Oh, I have this. This is kind of a red. That's kind of fun. Maybe we'll do one of those. And I keep this little bin by my, my workspace here. And it kind of has, it's where I toss all kinds of little things. So sometimes I never know what's going to come out of here. That one's kind of dark and fun. Maybe we'll use one of those and one of this more uh, mauve looking color. Now also you can um, take your inks and ink along the edges of this mulberry paper. Like if you wanted to take this paintbrush that we had out and just kind of blot in here and you can 
kind of put some right on the edges and it will just kind of soak it in. Um, since it's so delicate and it's a little harder to just rub your ink dauber along, you can still ink dab it, but um, you know, sometimes just putting a little bit on here is nice too. Kind of takes that white away. And sometimes it's all of these little details that will really make your projects pop. So just taking in a little extra time, you know, to ink or to tear or to really focus on your fibers, whatever it is that you are giving a little extra attention to, it will really help your projects pop. Um, in the grand scheme of things, these edges are just one small piece of my journal, but you know, they do add some interest, they do add some extra color. Um, and I think it will add a little fun. Okay, so let's go ahead and add this dark brad. Whoops, maybe. Yeah, aren't they great? They kind of remind me like a rusty patina or something kind of fun colors. Okay, so this paper is so super thin. I'm not even gonna use a pokey tool. I'm just gonna be careful and poke my brad right through there. And we'll carefully uh, fold these little brad flaps down if I can today. There we go. Get them as flat as we can since it's going to be right on the cover but we don't want to poke any holes through our paper that would be a bummer all right and we'll maybe add one more like right there and i have all kinds of stuff all over um, now also in the kit was one of these little ink dabbers so you can put it right on your finger and just kind of pounce into the ink and get some ink going around and that is great for those sturdier edges, like the edges of our books. Okay, so I've got one of this fun color here. I'm gonna go ahead and put it right over here. Kind of the center circle of one of those cogs. And again, we're gonna be just super delicate on the back. Trying not to rip our paper, but trying to get our brad nice and flat. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and glue. Finally. <laughs> I feel like we've been working on this piece for a while, but you know, like I said, sometimes it's the ones that you give that little extra attention to. Now you could also use some Nouveau Drops, the clear or the glossy accents or anything like that and go over this little clock centers and that would definitely give it a really fun look. Um, I may do something like that later. Um, I don't want to bore you guys watching things dry and we want to get some papers into our journal and also some cover uh, on the inside of the pages. So we will revisit this book because we're not going to be able to finish it all today. Um, you could finish it all in one day, I guess, if you um, were feeling ambitious and whatever. But we're not going to finish it all in this one live. So there's that. Now you can use, you know, book pages behind here. You don't have to use the cardstock that I used. You can use so many different things and get so many different fun looks. Um, but I really love this fibrous look. I love the background stamps. Um, so much fun interest going on here. And this is going to be a fun, fun cover. Now, a lot of times I will tell you guys, I do forget about doing a closure. A lot of my books will not have a closure. Um, just, just merely because I forget about them. But if you want to have one, you can do an eyelet here. And it doesn't work because this has a foot flap. So you can't really do that. Um, you could still tie it around this way. Tie a ribbon or a bow or whatever. Um, but a lot of times I just don't do one. <laughs> uh, let's see, who is this? What is this? Okay, you'd be in your own craft studio to answer that, you're afraid, but you'll message me, I'll message you back. Okay, yeah, so Karen, whatever your question was, Kay will get back to you. Yeah, I love this, right? And it was just some layers of some, um, some of the, the fun papers so and a lot of different textures going on and I think that's what makes it really really fun okay so while we have this out here I do want to do one more thing to the spine I've got this piece of lace this is just a piece of lace from my stash and um, you know you can use any kind that you want but I think it's gonna look really beautiful right here but we're gonna take it one step further and we're gonna dip it in this oxide ink 
A little bit messy, you guys, but it's worth it. <laughs> and you saw all I did with this oxide ink was I just put it on my, my palette here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit more water. So the oxide ink and some water and just pressing the lace in here. And so if you, um, you know, maybe you don't uh, wanna spend the, the money to buy all sorts of different colors of lace or whatever, buy white or off-white because then you can use your inks and you can change it to whatever color of ink that you have. This works without having the, the refillers too. This is one of the refiller inks, but you can use um, your pads to do this as well. You can just simply um, press your pad right onto a block or even a, just a piece of acetate on your desk if that's what you have um, and turn it whatever color that you want to. Hi Lori! Yeah this is one of my favorite styles of lace. Um, they call I think they call it like the uh, the eyelet lace or something like that because it or the buttonhole lace or something I don't know um, I always I always seem to be attracted to lace that has these little holes <laughs> and so you can keep going as much or as little as you want to here with the dyeing of this you can kind of leave it so that it's really saturated or kind of partially saturated um, yeah love the lace right so if you have a lace maybe you know it's just not it's not doing it for you. It's not your color or whatever it is. Or maybe, um, you know, you just want it to match or whatever. Um, just try it with your inks. Um, especially if it's one that you're just not feeling like you like a whole lot. You know, what do you got to lose, you know? And in worst case scenario, um, you can rinse it out in the sink. Um, and, you know, try again. But I love playing with it like this. Of course, I don't mind getting my hands dirty. If you, <laughs> if you don't like getting your hands dirty, um, use some gloves. It does get a little messy. Okay, there we go. Now we got some good color going on here. There we go. Love this. All right, so that's going to have to dry for a little bit. And this is just oxide ink, so it does just come off, you guys. Um, I usually keep baby wipes. These ones seem to be not very, not very moist. I'm having to add my own water. What's going on? There we go. Okay, so this lace is going to go right alongside the spine here. And I think it's just that added touch we need to pull in all the colors together. Look how pretty that is. So I'm going to let it dry just a little bit before I put it on there. So just another something extra you can do with your inks. Um, I do all kinds of things with my inks. I paint with them. I dive ink. Um, I ink my lace, my ribbons, my book page. I, I put ink on everything, you guys, even my hands, my pants. <laughs> and um, these little wooden pieces that you get, too, you can definitely... Now, there's a clock one in here somewhere. And we can put that in the ink, too, while we've got it out. I absolutely love these little wood cuts. Hi, Eileen. Eileen is in the house. So I'm just gonna take like this and get it all inky. You can use your paintbrush. And you can even just use your uh, ink pad and just brush it all along there. But I love how this looks. And it just gets that color all around. I'm gonna flip it back over. Now you can, if you have uh, thicker pieces of this, you, you can stamp on these. Like if you have a background stamp, you can put some scripted font or something in there. You can do all kinds of fun things. Yeah, isn't it awesome? Just totally mixed media craziness, right? <laughs> okay, so let's get some pages in our book here real quick. And, oh, actually, I guess we should cover the inside. Ugh, we'll get to the pages here eventually, I promise. Let's see, how are we doing? This one. This one is going to be a little bit short, I think. Yeah, because I cut it too short. But 
we've got a couple of pages we could put in there. Or um, there were, I kind of like this uh, copper paper. Ooh. And we're gonna have to decide on some papers for the envelopes. I love this. Such beautiful papers. Kay did a really good job picking out some pieces for this kit. So fun. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna cut a piece of this metallic-like paper. And um, maybe we'll make a journal card or something out of that since I cut it too small. Okay, so yeah, look how fun that's gonna be. trimmer my trimmer always seems to disappear I think because it's flat and I just bury right over it <laughs> there it is okay how are we doing on time you guys I kind of just didn't even really pay attention to the time Ooh, a craft estate sale oh my goodness so we've already been playing for an hour. <laughs> I think I'm gonna cover up the insides here and uh, and then we will call it okay for today. We could, th it, this is just so fun. I could keep going all day. <laughs> yeah, isn't that fun? That is in the kit as well. Beautiful papers in this kit. And you could do so many fun things with this. You could um, use an embossing folder on it, um, s you know, stamp on it, tear on it, whatever you want to do with it. Super, super fun. We're just going to enjoy this little luster that's here. <laughs> you could watch me all day. Well, that's good because I could keep going all day. Um, but I know Kay has other things. She probably needs to do business-wise to keep us all going and keep the White Rose Craft website going. But um, if you guys get this kit, I would love to see how your makes are going. So be sure to post in the White Rose Crafts Gallery. Now, if you get pieces like this, hang on to these because those are fun little scraps. You can do all kinds of fun things with those. And um, all right, so there's one. The White Rose Crafts Gallery is a private group. Oh, Elaine asked if she's in my private group. I see. Yeah, I have my own private group too, but when I'm here, I'm representing White Rose Crafts and hanging out with Kay and all the ladies in this fun gallery. Okay. All right, so here we go. So we can put this in here. Guys, I know we didn't get too far, but really we're not far off from a ready-to-go journal here um, because really all we have to do is slide our signatures in and then just start decorating from there on. So we're not far off. And we've taken this hamburger helper noodle box to this amazing, fun journal. Well, at least I think it's amazing. <laughs> Okay, and so if, if when you're in here you have these little bits and pieces from our ribbon left over, you can trim it off or you can just curl it under. A lot of times I like to just glue it under. So it's just one more way to keep it all intact here. Um, I don't know if she's got more of this kit, Rhonda. I think it's sold out now. Um, but she did say most of the pieces can be purchased separately. Uh, not all of them, but she did say most of them. So I hope, if nothing else, you can get some Stamperia rice paper because that really is the most fun part. Um, for, at least for me, anyways. I was super excited to see that in here. And was super inspired by all of the colors 
um, of that paper. That really was my inspiration for this whole little journal. Okay. And if your edges aren't matching up, mine aren't, um, I, I will go along and trim just a little bit, but you can also put more ribbon down there. You can put lace down there, whatever. You can ink along the edges. Um, all kinds of fun ways to match it all up. Okay, so there is some of that beautiful paper. Now this would have been really pretty if I had uh, used my embossing folder on there and just really pulled out some of the inks. Oops, look what I did on my, <laughs> that's okay, because we're gonna cover that up eventually here. Yes, the Petalics is what that is called, that paper. It's paper Petalics, it's so beautiful. There was some of that in uh, the other kit that was released this year too. For the card making. So pretty, I love it. Okay. And I love the shimmer and sheen of this paper. So fun. I think it really goes well with a steampunk kind of a vibe. So if you are working on steampunk, um, even if you're not really into like the grunge of steampunk, just these fun colors from the Stamperia rice papers, um, you can kind of pull out that more rust and patina kind of a look. It goes really nicely with that. Okay, you guys, so there we go. Look, we've got our, we've got our book cover and we've got our spine all sewn, or, well, sewn. We didn't have to sew on this one. Um, it is literally just the elastic bands. And then we're going to have the uh, floating spine with two signatures. So our signatures are going to go there. And then we've got these little folio flip outs um, that we are going to be able to decorate with paper. So next week I will be back and uh, we can uh, visit this book and um, I'm still still working on my other book as well with the Chow Bella Notre V paper so I've got some fun charms that are going to be going into that book and we'll be finishing that one up and then we'll get to uh, put some papers and everything into this one so look how fun this is coming along I love it um, ooh clock embossing folders yes that would be amazing I love everything clocks. Um, I'm probably going to put some Nuvo drops over this just so that it can set up and be clear and we'll take a look at what it looks like next time. Um, but yeah, this is turning into be just a great little book. So who knew from a hamburger helper box to this beautiful little journal. And you know, you could leave it just like this. You don't even have to put these little flips in here. You could put regular notebook paper and just have a cute little notebook to write in. Um, so if you are a journaler, just an, like a writing journaler, Absolutely, you can make your own little journal super easy and fun. So, all right, you guys. Well, I hope everybody has a really good rest of your Wednesday. Oh, yes, and as soon as this lace dries, I'm going to be putting that on the side. I think that is just going to be such a fun touch to tie all of these colors together. Look how beautiful that's going to be. So, something fun you can do with your ink and uh, just adds that little extra pop of color and ties everything together. So... Yeah, I hope you guys have had fun. Yes, Marilyn, new to everything, and that's okay. This is a great place to start. Yeah, you guys are so welcome. I'm loving this. So um, next time when we come back, we'll be decorating the backside and putting in some papers and using some more of the awesome pieces from this kit because there is still so much more. <laughs> so much more. Um, yeah, check out the White Rose Crafts website, and uh, there's lots of links here in the comments, and there's also a link in the description box, and there's all kinds of fun products over there, and even if the kit is sold out, Kay did say you can get many of the pieces individually, so you can probably find mulberry paper, um, the Petalix paper, that metallic that I just put on the inside, um, hopefully the, there's, uh, she said there's a lot more Stamperia stuff coming, yeah, and if you have any questions, just send a message to Kay, and she is more than happy to help you out. Um, she is a great communicator and really, really loves her products. So um, she is a great resource for all of your shopping needs at White Rose Crafts. All right, guys, have a good rest of your day. I hope you had fun getting messy with me and making this fun little book. It's hard to believe it was a hamburger helper box. Um, 
Oh, good. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being here and supporting White Rose Crafts. Uh, yes, Ursula, we are finishing for the day. We've been on for a little over an hour. The time just flew by. We're working on clocks and the time just flew by. But uh, yeah, lots of fun that we had today. This, this uh, is actually our journal cover. And it was a hamburger helper box, if you can believe that. <laughs> so, so much fun. Um, we transformed this hamburger helper box into this fun journal. And uh, I hope you will catch the replay and catch us here every Wednesday at the same time in the same place. I will see you guys here with White Rose Crafts Wednesdays. Have a good rest of your day, you guys. Bye-bye for now.